Hey, Denon High School, this is Mr. Aiden, and we are in 4.2. That's work, energy, and power. And guys, I'm going to go through a few different types of new types of energy. And as we know, energy can be a bunch of different types. And also, I'm going to be able to find what work is for you and also power. Okay? So this is a really important podcast. It has a lot of information, so you might have to watch it maybe more than once. Okay? Let's start with vertical springs. Now, vertical springs is when I have a mass attached to a spring, and it's going to be vertical, which means it's going up and down. Now, guys, I'm going to go back to forces for just a second. This is something I did not teach you in forces, that uh, it's kind of a tough place to put this uh, this subject, this topic of study. So, I'm going to do it right now, is that anytime you look at vertical springs, you're doing what we call Hooke's Law, which means we're not dealing with energy, we'll deal with forces. So, vertical springs go to forces. And what Hooke's Law states is that the force of a spring, it's a new equation for us, the force of a spring equals negative kx. Hopefully you can see the y is equal to mx plus b, okay? And of course the y is our force of our spring. My constant, or my slope, is k, because of course constant begins with the letter k. Now something I don't want you to look at is that negative sign in front. All that negative sign means is the spring will be a retracting force, which means it's going the opposite direction. That's why they put a negative in there. If you don't put a negative in there, it's no problem whatsoever. This x is kind of difficult, um, It's but it, all it is is the displacement of the spring. Look at the picture over at the right. Here we have an unstretched spring, and when we put something on it, it stretches out. The distance that it's stretched out is the displacement, is called x, x, okay? And so that is Hooke's Law. So let's come back over to my spring real quick and let's draw a free body diagram. Remember, if it's forces, draw your free body diagram and set up your equation. And we have two forces acting upon this. We have the force of the spring and we have the force of gravity. Spring is kind of like the tension force, okay? But it's a spring. And of course, the sum of your forces are zero. We're not gonna be accelerating, we're just gonna put this mass on and let it come to a rest. Okay, and so the force of gravity is equal and opposite to the force of the spring, which means mass times gravity equals k times x. Of course, we would know what mass is, we know what gravity is, we could measure x with a ruler, and so what are we left with is k. This is a great way, Hooke's Law is a great way to figure out what your spring constant is. And of course, your spring constant is in units of newtons per meter. Newtons per meter. Now let's go to horizontal springs. Anytime we're doing horizontal springs, we're going to deal with the conservation of energy. So vertical springs go to forces, go to Hooke's Law. Horizontal springs go to conservation of energy. And when we do conservation of energy here, we're going to use a new equation, which is the potential energy of a spring. S a spring has a potential energy similar to gravity, okay? Except it's a different equation. It's one half k, that's a spring constant x, that's the displacement, squared. Okay, so the potential energy of a spring is one half kx squared. And so, think about it, we're gonna, when we stretch back like in a, like a pinball machine type problem, the sum of your energies at one scenario is equal to the sum of your energy at another scenario. And of course, we're gonna be going from potential to kinetic. Potential to kinetic. Now, what I want you to see is, I wrote everything out, didn't I? I wrote my potential in terms of gravitational, my kinetic energy, my spring energy, and then on the other side, the exact same thing. Now, of course, there's we're at the same exact height, so gravity doesn't matter. There's no mgh here. At the beginning, we're all potential, so there's no kinetic. At the end, we are all kinetic, so there's no more potential to spring. This would be like this this mass coming flying off the spring. And so what happens here is, I have my potential of my spring is equal to my kinetic energy. One half kx squared is equal to one half mv squared. This is a great way to figure out how fast you're going to go if this, if this mass went flying off the table from the use of a spring. Okay? And so vertical springs use forces. Horizontal springs use conservation of energy. Potential to kinetic. Potential to kinetic. Let's take a look at work. Um, work, let me define it for, for you first. Work is equal to force times distance times cosine of theta. Okay, now a lot of times this cosine of theta is equal to one, all right? And so all this cosine of theta means is that work is a scalar quantity. 
and it's going to be measured in joules or newton meters. You can see why it's newton meters is force times distance. Force is in newtons, distance is in meters. And this is equivalent to joules, which means work and energy are the exact same thing. Now, if you ever see a force distance uh, graph, now you can just take the area. The area under the curve equals your work or your energy. Let, let's take a look at uh, three different types of problems. Our first problem is this one over to the left here. I'm going to take a 10 kilogram box and I'm going to push it with 23 newtons in the x direction for 10 meters. And we're going to calculate the work done by the worker on the crate. And so work is equal to force times the distance. Now, since work is scalar, I always like to say the work in the x is equal to the force in the x times the distance in the x because we're going to d deal with the same direction and my force in the x direction is 23 newtons. My distance is 10 meters and so what is the work that was done in the x direction? It was 230 joules or 230 newton meters. The next problem is calculate the work done by gravity on the crate. So the work is equal to force times distance and gravity is working in the y direction so I'm gonna say because it's scalar the work in the y is equal to the force in the y times the distance in the y now the force in the y there's no force in the y and there's no distance in the y so there's no work that has been done in the y direction so no work done by gravity let's go to this last question this last question is you can see the 23 newtons is at an angle of 30 degrees and if you remember, we want to find the work done by the crate. Okay, so the work in the x is equal to the force in the x times the distance in the x. And it went for 10 meters in the x direction. And so I need to break this up in the components, and this is where I use the cosine of 30, the t cosine of 30, which means my force in the x is equal to 20 newtons. So my force was really only 20 newtons. And my distance was, of course, 10 meters, which gave me 200 joules of work in this direction. And so you could have used the FD cosine of theta and plugged in all your numbers of 23, 10, and cosine of 30 degrees, and you would have gotten the same number of 200 joules. Okay? And so that is how work works. And we have something, a very important thing called the work energy theorem. The work energy theorem. And what the work energy theorem is, is anytime you find how much energy it takes to stop a roller coaster or stop a car, we're going to use the work energy theorem. Work is equal to the change in my kinetic energy. So because work is in joules, kinetic energy is in joules, that means they're equal and opposite, aren't they? So I could find the work by just taking the 1 half mb squared final minus the 1 half mb squared initial. If I take that change of that kinetic energy, it equals my work. And of course, I can make this uh, even bigger of force times distance equals 1 half mb squared minus 1 half mb squared. Same type of thing. So I could find the force or the distance there. Work energy theorem. Don't forget the work energy theorem. It it is a lot of times the answer or the way to do many of our problems. Okay, let's uh, let's finish up with boom boom firepower here. And boom boom firepower is how to calculate power. And power is a nice easy equation. Power equals work or energy over time in seconds. So power is equal to work over time. Energy joules over time seconds. And what do we know? Work is work equals force times distance force times distance over time. Now I know what distance over time is. Distance over time is velocity. So we could also say power equals force times velocity. And power is in units of joules per second or what's the units of joules? Exactly. Watts. Watts are the units of joules. Okay? Guys, hope this helped out. Work, energy, and power. I'll see you in class. Peace in the Middle East. Yo.